Today we're going to find the domain of a function. Um, in the example that you see here, we notice two things. One, we have a fraction, so there can't be a zero in the denominator. And we also have a square root, and you know that you cannot have a negative number in the square root. First, let's examine the square root. The square root of x minus 3, we know cannot be equal to zero. Uh, it cannot be a negative number. Um, it, therefore, let's just find where the boundary is between negative numbers and positive numbers, and that would be at zero. And in order to make this square root to be zero, we know that x would have to be 3. Therefore, we must have a, a, a x value that is greater than or, or equal to 3. for us to have a positive number under the square root. So that's the first thing that we know. We also know that we cannot have a zero in the denominator. So the question is, what would make the square root of x minus 3 zero? And we just did that. We noticed that if the square root of x minus 3 is zero, then x must be equal to 3. Well, we can't have 3. So this, we're not allowed to have that. x cannot be equal to 3. And looking at our two answers here, uh, in order to get the domain of the function, we know that neither we cannot have x equal to 3, and yet x must be greater than or equal to 3. So therefore, our answer must be the domain x must be greater than 3. And that is our domain because it can't be equal to 3 but we know that it must be greater than it. Going for our second example, uh, we have a, another polynomial. And in this polynomial, we notice that we um, have, it says x equal to, this should be y equal to. I'm not sure why that's there. Excuse me. <laughs> And we look at this and we say, what is it that we cannot have in our domain? And we look at the first term. We have a square root of 85. That's perfectly fine. Um, we have the negative 4, x squared. So that term looks fine. You could put any x value there. Notice that the x squared is not in the square root. Otherwise, we would have to examine that. In our second term, we could have any x value there. And it would be perfectly legitimate. Our third term, we could have any x value there, and our fourth term is just 4. Therefore, there's no restrictions, and our domain is all real numbers. And now it's your turn. Find the domain of each of the following. If you have any problems, please uh, go back in the screencast, rewind it, and uh, review what you learned. And I hope that you learned a lot. So good luck, and see you again next time.